Hey guys, I'm recording a video tutorial right now and I'm going to show you how to make a sample cube. Now this is really important because in product design everything you do and draw is based on the cube. And right now I'm going to just rotate the canvas 90 degrees to give me a nice little thing. I mean think about everything you, you draw in nature, everything you look at in nature is made out of cubes. Um, such as a computer, a cube, a human face, a cube, well maybe that's not a good example, but a computer, laptops, luggage, everything is based on a cube. If you can draw a cube, you can also make anything you want, especially in product design. So real quickly, I'm going to show you how to draw a real quick simple cube, and I'm going to use the simple brush tool. As you see, I like to put, you know, my layers here, my paths, and a whole bunch of these. That way everything's quickly able to reference. I know some of you guys like to put your layers here and then your um, troll, I guess what you call it, screen tray right here. But I find it quicker and faster just to put things here. And I like to test it a little bit. I use Control-Z to re undo any of my mistakes. So let's choose a nice color, a nice solid black. And if you hold shift, you can make a really straight, fast, straight line. And that's what we want. Now, let's make a new layer. And this one's going to be our test layer. Now, the secret to drawing stuff in Photoshop is after you draw it and you make your mistakes, you create a new layer and draw right over it and just keep on doing it until you hit what you need. So right now I'm going to draw a perspective grid. We're going to make this the horizon and this our vertical. And now we're going to draw uh, like a little simple cube. Use that, that. Notice as I'm drawing, I'm not really trying to get it that hard. I mean, if you, if you look at perspective, everything has a vanishing point. So this goes all the way to the end. This goes all the way to the end. These two should eventually come together and meet. And it's the same with this way, you know. Now I'm working with CS3, so there's no rotate function, but, you know, if you need to work it really hard, that's what I would use. I would export this into CS3, and then it'd be easy to make cubes. But personally, with, you know, it only takes like 20, 30 seconds to make this, and I can easily cover it. So look, I just made the layer. Now I'm going to take this layer, reduce it, until I get like a nice um, low imprint, and then I'm going to add a whole nother layer and just draw right over it, making very nice straight lines. You know, and I just do this until I get it right. And this style of drawing has a lot of characteristics to it because it has a lot of pen pressure movement. You know, plus, you know, we're gonna try and draw shadow lines. So imagine all lines going through. This is how you plot the shadows. You basically imagine the light is very far away. So by the time the light hits, it's all coming out straight like this. So what happens is it'll come out like this. And then we plot where the plane would hit. So assuming that these same perspective lines, it's going to hit here. And just using the same perspective lines, it's going to hit right here. So from here to here is how far that light's going to go. So now we have a very quick cube, and we know where all of our shadow lines are. This is a very quick and easy method of drawing out a simple shape. Now for the final revision, you know, I, I want to get this really, really, really clean. So what I'm going to do is once again, I'm going to lower the opacity and I'm going to use the line tool. Now the line tool is very good at this. Let's just click, make sure no arrowheads come out. And the secret to doing product is the outside, the outlines are always very thick. So that's, nah, it's not thick enough. So we'll increase it. 
here's the tool, maybe about, let's do 11 pixels, I'm gonna try, yeah, that's really thick right there. And for some reason it's coming out stylized. Let me see why it's doing that. No, actually it's going pretty clean, okay. So, from there we just simply lasso our lines. And now we got a box. And then, now we want to make the inside lines a little bit smaller. So about here, here, and here. Now we got a nice, clean cube. And now our very last part, the shadow lines, we want to make it really small. So maybe about two pixels per line. So we just do that. And there's a reason why it's going to be so clean like this. Because this, let me redo that. This whole thing is going to be a value scale drawing, meaning that it's going to be very toned. So now that we got all these shapes, what we want to do is take all these shapes, press Apple E or Control E if you're in Windows, and merge it. We're going to get rid of those original two layers. And now what we have is a very clean cube. Now we're going to add some shadow to it. So what we're going to do is take this clean layer, set it to multiply, create a brand new layer. So the way I like to do is press Shift, Apple, N for new layer. Call this the total layer. Put this underneath the shape. And we're going to once again just color it in. So what we're going to do is use the lasso tool Choose a couple points. We're going to do this as the darkest side of the cube, since it's the one in the shadow. And we'll choose maybe a gray area value about, let's say, 80%. I'm just guessing the 80. You know, I'm going to use my paint bucket tool, which is G, and that's going to give me that. And then I'm going to try and lasso all the other stuff. If you want to make a straight lasso, you just hit it and you press Alt while you lasso. When you let go, it will just automatically connect. So I'm going to find the next color layer, so maybe give it about 50%. You know? And this should actually maybe be a little bit lighter, so maybe make it a little bit lighter. I'm using levels, which is Apple L to get me that menu. And I want to put this about maybe 50%, something like that. Okay. I'm going to make it a little bit darker just so it changes. It's, it's good to have like variations. So now you got a cube like this. Now, the shadow is normally going to be about, I'd say, the shadow cannot get really darker than the dark area of the cube. I mean, there's a whole bunch of rules with it, but in general, you don't really want it to be darker than this. So, I'm going to quickly just lasso this. And just throw in shadow. Now look what we do. Now the line was thin because it's so it could just merge in with the shadow. And we'll just fill this in real quick. Now there's lots of ways you can do this. I could have just duplicated this layer and done a fill in. I would have, you know, done the exact same thing. But I wanted to show you guys how to use some of the uh, optional weapons as our or optional tools that we have in here. Ooh, I'll put that too dark. All right, just put that like that, and there you go. You have a cube. Now, if I wanted to take this even further, I could make it super tall. So this black outline here, which we use a lot in industrial design, I could get rid of that. Now you have a complete tone. This is what tonal is. It means there's no outlines. In reality, we add it because it makes things easier to draw, easier to see. Now to make this even more realistic, we have to talk about bounce light, meaning when light comes, it comes in and it 
bounces off this ground and comes into here. So we have to put that in. So one way to do that is we're going to select this area right here by pressing the wand tool, selecting that. I don't want this area here. Actually, I might, but I don't want it for right now. So what I'm going to do is press the L tool and see if I can't just cut it out. I'm holding the Alt key to erase whatever I don't need out of the lasso tool. That's going to give me this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the grayscale again. And instead of filling it all up, I'm going to use the gradient tool. And I'm going to choose like a very light, light, something like white. Now, so if I do that, it's obviously way too strong. So I'll change the opacity down to like maybe 10% so I can control it a little bit more. Even that's a little too high. I want something that I can just barely put it in. So maybe I'll select this. Ten percent, yeah, something like that. That just shows a little bit of gradients from the, the the light that's punching through. You can even do it here too, because these gradients come up onto here into here. So just do a little bit. We'll choose a light color. Yeah, there's no. There's many ways to get this done, but by doing that, it automatically just makes it feel more like there's a, a bounce thing going on. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of this outline. I think it's a little too strong. See how it's already sort of merging in with the tonals and making it look more real? And as you know, shadows, when they're close to the object, they tend to be very straight. So this is very, very hard right here. It's hard, and I want it to get softer. You know, if you've ever looked at your shadow, just go and take a look at it. But the farther the shadow is from you, the more softer it gets. So what I'm gonna do now is just paint over with a brand new layer. And I'm gonna just take some of this white and gradiate into it a little bit just to smooth it out you know? and i'm going to try to make sure it doesn't get into any of my other drawings so i'm going to do a mask tool and just mask it a little bit these are real quick ways to get things done as fast as possible working in the product design environment you learn that all i really care about is when is it due you know because you're you know working with people who are like, So now, you got a realistic cube drawing, and I hope this helps you guys a lot. And you know, presentation is a key, so we'll add a little thing, and boom, this is our cube. I hope you guys enjoyed this today, and uh, just check out my website, artofmongol.blogspot.com. Thank you guys very much.